I gotta show you these. I mean, okay. I've been watching you since I was a kid, so right. those are like my tickets for some of your older movies. Oh, that oh. is hilarious. Men in wow. Black. You're a hoarder like me. You're a hoarder. Ali. Hampton Town Center. Ali. I got Independence Day 1. That one's hard to see. That's in New uh, York. No, the, independent, the first Independence, first Independence Day. Day. That is genius. Enemy of the State Enemy is a masterpiece, state. man. That's fantastic. Yeah, Men in Black. That's and it's, I can tell that you can keep those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'll be, you'll be money for all these and, movies. And I was pretending like I could actually read those. So I was like, I'm, <laughs> I was like enemy, uh, enemy of the state. Oh, yeah, enemy of the state. Men in black. Men in black. Thank you, Jerry. Men in black. I couldn't see him at all. <laughs> you know, my favorite scenes in the whole movie is the scene where you're trying to get him to use his flames for the first yeah, time. You yeah, go, yeah. You're taunting him. You're like, I'm just trying to get him there. Just trying to get him. What is the craziest thing someone has done to you or you've done to try to get somewhere in an emotional part in a movie? Mm. David asked. Yeah, David, David. Pushing buttons. Yeah, David yeah. Uh, pushes buttons for mm -hmm. sure. What is he doing? What, like what was the one? What was some of the crap he said to you? In the <laughs> he, 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 I mean, he, he had a different approach to all of us. Um, obviously, definitely either like supporting or kind of, you know, with Joel, I think he picked on a lot. Yeah. There was only once he used something on me and he said, um, he said in a scene, he said, imagine you've just woke up, you blacked out last night, and you look at your phone and you find pictures of you molesting a child. Action. <laughs> yeah. no, action. Are you kidding like, me? Jeez. I mean, Thanks, David. and that was the shot. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm literally I was like, shaking right now. Look at my hands. Yeah. See, but see what it did. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That's what did you get anything like that? Uh, yeah. What did no, you no, get? No, so they, they, that's his superpower. Yeah. He knows how to give you an image that absolutely wrecks That's your so mind cool. and he says action and you're like uh uh okay Aww. okay okay <laughs> and that you know that's how he gets his uh gets the performance yeah, out of you yeah. but yeah he he uh he says wild stuff <laughs> what'd you get i have to know one thing you got so uh, it's, it's hard because it's hard you can't know, even say this stuff on television that david Ayer says. <laughs> give me one just give me one of them he yeah. said he so there's a, there's a scene where um, uh, Colonel Flagg hands me uh, letters from my daughter. daughter. And he's been holding the letters the whole time and I thought my daughter stopped writing to me. And he has 50 letters that he's been keeping, not letting me know that my daughter still loved me. So the scene is he puts them down on the table and me, <laughs> me and Harley, me and Marlo, Mar Margo are looking at the letters and we're supposed to look at the letters and like, we can't believe that he did that. And David comes up and he says, hey, he just put a fetus on the table. <laughs> Action. Action. <laughs> and everybody's what? like, what? what? <laughs> but I mean, that this really, is freaking but, but me what out. he does is when, you know, he knows how to fry <laughs> your mind in a way while the camera's rolling and you're thinking, why would he say that? But, uh, <laughs> That's awful, <laughs> but, but then that's the look that's on their face that he. And now I'm gonna watch these scenes again, yeah. knowing he said no, that to you. Level yeah. of appreciation. I don't yeah. think any of us even need to be able to act in this case. He literally just did it no, for he, us. Yeah, he, he did. Pulled it out of us. He definitely yeah. gets it. What was the gift you got from Jared Leto? I, I know yours was bullets. Uh, well, no, he sent me what a, else did you get? a dead pig. Okay. He sent me a he dead did, pig with the throat cut with out. With the throat cut in there. Did you send anything back to him? Um, I just sent back, hey man, listen, I'm just acting. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you get? Hey. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't even you know if I worms. can say. Yeah, yeah. I, I, oh, well, you can't. There's some stuff you can't. Can. Can. There's can. stuff that I couldn't really Anal uh, beads? Can I say that? You know I guess you can. I but he said you, yeah. What did you say? You know, the, the anal beads. And oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I still have this, by the way. I told you this last time, but I still have it with me. Yeah. Carry it with me all the time. Back even for a That's drink. so great, brother. I keep it in my wallet, man. I can't believe how many years has passed. Yeah, I also have Lord of War. I, I, which I absolutely love. Best poster of all time. So incredible. <laughs> I love the idea of you sending the gifts. And I know that there's been so many stories about that, but I'm wondering what was the process of that? Did you actually package them up yourself? And like, yeah. who delivered them? How, are, how, yeah. how did that happen? Yeah, it was interesting to do because it was, you know, the Joker loves to play games. He loves to manipulate. And, and that was part of the reason to do that. And when you do give a gift to someone, even in real life, you think about, God, what do I get them? <laughs> you think about who that person is to you. What would they like? So that immediately started to be really good homework for me. What do I give Deadshot? What's my relationship with Deadshot? What's our history? And down the line with every character, you start to think about what would I give them? I gave Deadshot a briefcase full of bullets. It was kind of a message. It was kind of a threat. It was kind of a reminder. And I also, people haven't really talked about this. I wrote every character a note 
a poem. Really? So it, it what it did is it started me to it it started me on this journey of thinking about who these people are. Um, and it was a lot of fun. I did give some nice gifts as well, but people don't talk about that. They what just the talk nice about the, some of the strange ones. And by the way, some of the strange ones aren't even true. Is, tell me uh, the used condom one's not true. Well, I'm not going to tell you what's true or what not, but people, the press love to uh, uh, have fun <laughs> with it. And, you know, there were some crazier ones and some nicer ones that I gave what's that I haven't nice been gift? talking about. I did give cupcakes. Oh, this is great. Yeah. Like, I, want, I want cupcakes, Jerry. Yeah. Come on, dude. Yeah. yeah, I didn't give curly fries though. No curly fries. No. In and out burger. No, but human meat is always a great gift. <laughs> when I talked to you for Dallas Buyers Club, you said that you stay in character for the production because you don't want to have to work back up to that emotional state. You want to yeah. you want to be in there now. Yeah. And I know that was something similar you did here with Joker. I'm wondering, do you write music when you're when you're in character? Have you ever written a song in character? I haven't, uh, but I think that you know we all have different processes for what we do. You know, a writer may listen to music, um, he may have a ritual, or she may have a certain uh, uh, habit of doing something, uh, whether you're a poet or an artist or a writer or an actor, I think we all have our own process. And, and for me, music is always very important and inspiring. And I just do whatever I have to do to be as focused and committed as possible and kind of shut out the distractions that are out there. You know, one thing I found interesting, and this is just my personal opinion, I'm, I don't know if you agree or not, but I think your character as the Joker has redeemable qualities. I actually felt for him at times and somehow kind of rooted for him at mm. times. When I look at Heath Ledger's character, that I think was pure evil. Like mm. he just went pure evil. So I'm wondering, is, where is the balance between bad and evil? as playing the Joker. And I don't know if you agree with me, but that's just how it's I It's a great question. And I, I do think that this Joker is very different. Mm. I think that you do experience some things with this Joker that we haven't really explored, that haven't been explored in other films. And that was exciting to uh, kind of, you know, dig around in new territory. Uh, yeah. One thing I love about your music is that it's so, it's, to me, it's the closest thing to a cinematic experience that without actually watching a movie. Thank you. And like, you know, I'll hear something like, this is war, and you'll say like the Brave New World line, and I'll yeah. like start crying, it's yeah. just so emotional. I'm wondering like, is there a song in particular that you think represents the Suicide Squad? I think there are, the film is very musical. I think each character kind of has their theme song in a way. I think the Joker, uh, there are some songs that I think are indicative, some 30 Seconds of Mars songs of the Joker. Uh, certainly This Is War is a good anthem for him, or Attack from back in the day. Yes. Uh, there's a newer song called End of All Days, where there's a line that, that goes, uh, I'll punish you with pleasure, I'll pleasure you with pain, that I think is very appropriate for the Joker. Uh, you know, when I, was, when I was making the film, I would listen to... Uh, folk music from the 1920s and there was something about that and I was also listened to preachers like some of the oldest recordings of uh, American preachers and I found that to be something about that was was really inspiring. Jared, you're awesome, man. Thank you for everything you did. See you, man. Oh, See you next. One of my favorite shots in the whole film is your elevator moment. I was geeking out beyond believe I had nerd tears. And I was just wondering, in that scene, your hair goes in front of your face and you blow it away. Yeah. Man. Was that improv or was yeah. that, really? Yeah, it happened quite a lot because I had them there. So I really wanted that to get in at some point. I'm glad it was the elevator scene. You know, I was mentioning to you about the, the gun scene in the trailer, mm. and that didn't make it in. You were mentioning that your family I loved know, that scene. I know, my nephew, that was his favorite bit, and he was like, it wasn't in the movie. <laughs> I was like, I don't get a say in that, buddy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you know, one of the best moments in the movie was this moment when Will Smith's trying to get El Diablo to actually do his flames for the first time. And at one point he says to him, he goes, I was just trying to get you there. And I was wondering, like, what's the most cr craziest thing anyone's ever had to do to help you get to an emotional spot in a movie? Like, someone had to, like, get you there emotionally. Definitely, yeah, I reckon David S. directing can get like kind of crazy sometimes. It's, it's pretty intense. Um, I don't want to repeat it, but like some of the things he told me to say to like Ike Barinholtz's character and stuff, yeah. which I definitely will not repeat, but I'm just like, <laughs> whoa, like we're going deep with yeah, this David's stuff. a big fan of getting you there. So uh, <laughs> we, I think it, you know, it's, it, it would not be uncommon for him to you know, whisper in someone's ear and 
you know, instruct them to uh, call someone particular things. Or, oh my uh, god! You know, this is all part of his manipulative <laughs> kind of approach to, mm. to filmmaking. Did you deal with this as well? Yeah, um, he was actually very supportive with me because I, it's my first film ever, and, um, and except the time he chopped off two feet of your hair. Yeah, you know, That's he, all. he was very generous. Okay. Generous with my hair. I know it's kind of a loaded question, but I am just genuinely curious. Like, have you ever had like, have something crazy to do to get somewhere emotional? Uh, I'm just laughing because that was like my every day on set with Viola. <laughs> she, <laughs> David, David Ayer had Viola almost throughout the whole shoot. Every scene I had with her, she'd be standing behind the camera and be like, Hey, Joel. Hey, Flat. <laughs> you little bitch. <laughs> You're a little bitch. <laughs> There you go. That's how you got and it, there. And it was, uh, it was, yeah. they had concocted up something where they were going to humiliate me and make me angry the whole show. And it shoot. worked. It worked. He destroyed the whole room. <laughs> he did good. Anything, <laughs> anything for you that you've ever had to use to get, I mean, like, I always think back to, like, doubt or something like that. Like, that, like how do you even get there? Like, how do you get there? It's amazing. I can't think of anything offhand that anyone did that was completely crazy. I mean, that probably is it. And I have to tell you, every time I went to set for David Ayer, because he doesn't care. Nobody, he didn't go to school. He didn't go to the school that said, you know what? You can't just say anything to an actor. <laughs> no, he, did he didn't not go, go to, to that, that school. school. No. He missed class that day. <laughs> he did. So What's he, he saying to you? All kinds of things. Some, it's, a it's, lot if of you foul Because if you share a memory, with him of a childhood experience, he will use that against you. Let me just tell you. Really? Yes, he will. I know uh, Jared sent a lot of gifts. I know you guys have asked this a million times, but I am genuinely curious what happened to your gifts. So oh. is, where is your live rat? Like, is it, rat did you, did you name it? Guillermo del Toro. Um, Pinky the snake disappeared, vanished out of her aquarium into wow. thin air. What? I've got no idea where Pinky is. Wait, Guillermo del Toro has your rat? Yes, through a series of interesting events here. Yeah. And what about yours? What, what, what did you receive and where is it now? Uh, I got a I got an STI that I've still got and I'm on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's good. Medicine. That's okay. Works. Modern medicine, you know. Yeah. There's hope for me. Yeah. The Tony or Genesis money will help you get Something through that. Yeah. Exactly. Sentiment <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yours? <laughs> well, Jared gave me my first set of, you know, adult toys and porn magazines and um, You're I... You're the dishwasher at the moment. Yeah, no, <laughs> actually, no, I had to take it home, you know, it's a gift from the Joker, so I took it home and I still live with my parents and they're very traditionally Japanese, so... Uh, this is great. I opened up my suitcase and sure enough, my mom asked me, Karen, what is that? And I said, that's not mine. <laughs> what was it? It was just adult toys and fun things. Okay. Lots of fun things. Well, there's a great scene in the film where Margot Robbie looks at you and says, are you the devil? And you say, <laughs> maybe. And for me, that moment was her actually seeing your true colors. Yeah. Do you, do you, do you read that scene that way, that she actually saw who you really were? Absolutely, and I loved it. I mean, it was an opportunity for me to kind of understand the depth of my evilness. I mean, it's always simplified way of saying it. It was but real easy for me. I caught on to that real quick. That was, uh, it did not take a long time at all. Yeah, this is my dude. <laughs> I love you guys. Now, the helicopter crash when it flips yeah. is brilliant, but there's actually a really cool shot that David has where he goes inside, and we watch you guys flipping. How is that filmed? Um, well, they they built uh, a gimbal. Well, what's it? Uh, that's what it's called. I don't know what it is, but but it just it makes it, it we're spinning for real. So it's just the, the, they built a, a chopper that is spinning like this. So it's in some kind of contraption with a electric engine. That so we're spinning inside, and the like unsettling thing about that is is that they placed to shoot that scene the last day. Oh, really? See, you don't want to be put in a, like in a contraption that's spinning around like ten feet up in the air on the last day because you know that they're worried about you know. You know, what if something happens, so you know? Dies. At least we got a movie, got you know? Yeah, they're not gonna funny. survive, yeah. but we got a movie. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get sick at all? Like, did they spin you for like hours? Like, I was fine, but I, I was more concerned about Will Smith that was right in front of me, and he was like, I'm, I'm not bad with spinning. I'm not good with spinning. I'm, I'm not good at all with spinning. And, and, like, and his face was turning like greenish. Yeah. And, and, and we were all seeing flying around. He was flying around, I was like, oh my God, he's gonna throw up in my face, and it's gonna be like, so he's but, more uh, afraid of the vomit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you do a really good job of balancing score and 
soundtrack. Yes. And usually directors go either soundtrack driven films or score driven films. And I'm wondering like, how you figured out when you were going to use a song and when you're going to use Steven's score. Well, you know, score is beautiful because uh, when used right, instead of leading the audience, you're just sort of bolstering the emotion of a scene. And you can, you can uh, use thematic melodies in different placements to sort of, you know, recall uh, other moments in the film. Whereas, uh, you know, a soundtrack, a, a, you know, a source cue, uh, you know, a, an old rock standard, or even yeah. something we did with Atlantic and wrote for the movie, uh, they carry their own power. And, and when you do use something like the Stones or Creedence Clearwater Revival or something like that, it, it brings um, sort of a history. You're, you, the audience is now bringing their own history into the movie too because mm -hmm. they know and love these songs. You know, it's fascinating to me that I was talking to you about shooting on film. And a lot of your actors have worked on film previously. It's another, like Will Smith yes. grew up on film, obviously. Yep. And some of the actors are younger, so they might have not worked on film. Yes. But I'm wondering how that, was that something that you had to like teach them, like the idea of being on film, yes. what that meant, <laughs> number of takes? Okay, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get uh, hate mail for this and, and, and might get my house firebomb. But, uh, you know, my, my cinematographer, Roman, uh, you know, says that there's film actors and there's video actors. Mm. And, and, and what that means is, is film is so technically precise. There's such a precision to using film uh, that you have to hit your marks. You, you have to understand the lenses. You have to uh, really control your physicality in a very specific way. And in the world of handheld video uh, or, or digital, uh, you can be much looser with the blocking and much looser with the camera and much more verite. And mm. so somebody like Will comes in, bam, hits his mark, knows his light, and nails it the first time. And it, and it takes a little bit to, um, sometimes you have to re-educate an actor. The sequence when the helicopter comes down and rolls. Yes. I was geeking out beyond belief. I'm wondering how <laughs> that shot is being, so it's, is it practically coming down and how are you rolling the actors? Well, we built, we built what we call the rotisserie, which is we took our, our Chinook helicopter set, uh, you know, big massive set, put it inside a cage, and then spun the cage with the actors strapped in. And uh, that, that, was, that was pretty fun. They were, you know, I, don't, I want to give it away, but if you actually look at their faces, they're laughing. Real, in the movie, you can see them laughing you can see a little them bit. Laughing, well, it kind of yeah. goes with the characters. Yeah, but it does kind of go yeah. with the characters. Yeah. yeah. But it's like like Margot's spinning in this thing, and she's laughing her head <laughs> off. And I'm like, okay, let's just go with that. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, David, thank you so much, man. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thank Thanks for shooting it. on film, man. Yeah. I'm, you said something interesting in the press comments earlier about how like are people gonna know that I'm in this costume? And I, I completely saw you, obviously, in that moment you mentioned about I am beautiful is a great moment to have. I am curious, though, what, what the timing of putting it on and taking it off and like, how much of your day was dedicated to that. And then did you get a lot of scenes done when you had it all on? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, look, I would turn up at the set at 3 in the morning <laughs> and um, for five months and, then five, you know, the three hours or five hours, depending on what we were, angles we were shooting, but five hours was the max. And then you'd wear it for 12 and then you two hours to take it off. So yes, you did get the full 12 hours of shooting and, um, and you know, in between this lovely guy, I mean, and I mean this, this guy, because he saw the pressure that, you know, the prosthetics was putting on my back, he actually himself went out of his way and bought me a reclining chair so I could recline in between takes, conserve my energy. And, and he, even, he had his own burdens wearing what? 50 pounds of suit. I couldn't sit down or else my legs would just go numb. So, so he bought me a up. chair to recline, but he couldn't even sit down. He's no. Walking. So, you know, we were a real squad. That's this awesome. My, this yeah. is my squaddy right here. There's a great moment in the film where Will Smith's character is trying to get the El Diablo to use his flames for the first time. Right. And he's like, he taunts him and taunts him and he goes, all right, I just wanted to get you there. And I was wondering, like, what is the craziest thing you ever had to do or had someone do to you to get to an emotional place in a park? Mm. Oh, mm. for me, it's... If you look at my life, it's my parents died when I was eight. My mother was hit by a drunk driver in front of my house. Two months later, my dad drowned. I'm sorry. And for me, the connection of my comics, my dad used to bring comics to me uh, once a week. Uh, and for me, there's that tie-in and that connection. So my character driven is very deep. Wow. So I got a lot of stuff. I'm still going through therapy. My wife's a clinical psychologist, so I'm good. <laughs> there you go. You asked. Know you asked, man. I mean, I mean, look. The, the process of this movie will pretty much answer your question. David Ayer has kind of set up a boot camp 
where um, you know it was three, four hours intense training workouts, and then followed by rehearsals and almost like therapy sessions where he extracted the most intimate, you know, darkest secrets, and and, and we were all in the room, and yeah. then and then when we go, um, we felt it was a sacred room until we got out in front of the camera, and he would just throw it right out in front of you <laughs> to induce the, the the reaction that he wanted from a character, and you're like, you son of a. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's what it did, it created this, you know, like if I was three years old and I said, you know, I was, I was sleeping on the floor and didn't have a bed and mice were crawling over me and I'm, I was traumatized by it. And I, walked, I walked into the scene and he goes to me, um, right, we're coming in, we don't know who's there, but I want you to give me a look like this. Millions of little mice crawling all no, over you. Like, <laughs> and I was like, uh, you know, all of us all like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he's like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Actually, and I'm like, this guy. And then afterwards, I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> and and, and seeing the Diablo thing with Will, when we were doing the training, he wanted Diablo, Jay, to get into character. They were so slapping the hell out of him. They were bitch slapping him, and he stood in his character because his, you know, he knows about incarceration and in jail. He brought out this whole thing. He didn't even need special powers. He's using his words saying, you can't touch me because this is my place. If mm. you want to open that up, yeah, it was a cool everybody's scene, dead. You know what I mean? There's, yeah. there's, but at, from a human level, David would draw that out and bring that mm. in us. Wow. And we all have it. We don't need special powers. We have that killer instinct, you know? Mm. 